Welcome back to MSNBC Live. We mentioned we had shown you a picture earlier uh, from the tarmac of Donald Trump's plane landing there in Omaha, Nebraska. As we mentioned, he's doing some sort of a media briefing on board. What you're looking at now is a picture of the bus that's holding some of the reporters making their way out there to the plane. What is it all about? Well, your guess is as good as ours at this point. Um, we will find out more once those folks get on the plane and then get off and are able to share it all with us. Um, and also, just a correction, um, I had said it was about a 15-minute flight from Omaha over to where the event is happening in Iowa. I'm told it's actually a 15-minute drive, so my apologies on misunderstanding that. Um, I want to bring in now MSNBC contributor James Peterson of Lehigh University and McKay Coppin senior political writer for BuzzFeed and also the author of the new book about the GOP race for the White House, The Wilderness. Uh, gentlemen, nice to have both of you with us, as always. As we look at this live picture of what looks more like a party bus in some ways uh, than, a, than an airport bus, uh, James, any idea on what Donald Trump could be planning? As we know, nothing is conventional uh, with his campaign. I mean, he could possibly be talking about the fact that he's allegedly going to begin to spend some of his own money on this campaign. Uh, if you follow him on social media, which I don't, but I have seen the news reporting on it, uh, it seems pretty clear that from his perspective, he's under budget. Uh, he took a jab at, uh, at Jeb Bush, uh, saying that Jeb Bush has spent $59 million and is in last place. He claims to have spent much, much less than that. He's in first place. Uh, but he's, he's, he's losing a bit in the polls right now in Iowa, so allegedly he should be announcing he's going to put some of his own money up uh, to to invest in, in, in his own campaign. But who knows, Erica, <laughs> with Mr. Trump? You know, he's much more interested in the antics and the optics. So the political theater of this is probably much more interesting to him than any substance to come out of what he will actually say today. Uh, and McKay, would you agree with that assessment? It's really more about the political theater here. Yeah, I mean, Trump knows that at any given moment he can call a press conference and it'll be carried live on on on, uh, on cable and it'll be the you know the subject of a thousand headlines and uh, it, it really doesn't matter what he ends up saying <laughs> uh, that much. It, it, the point is that Which he gets the attention. Wants, Which right? was his point for a long time in terms of not buying advertising, as he put it. He said, look, I don't need to. I'm on all the time. He's not incorrect. Right. Um, it's interesting, though, you mentioned how, you know, we hear him going after Jeb Bush a lot. Uh, last night, he actually started going after Chris Christie. Let's, let's take a listen as these folks make their way up onto the plane. To the Paris attacks, senators came together for a top-secret briefing on the terrorist threat. Marco Rubio was missing, fundraising in California instead. Two weeks later, terrorists struck again in San Bernardino. And where was Marco? fundraising again in New Orleans over the last three years. Sorry about that. That's, a, that's an ad that was launched by a super PAC uh, backing Jeb Bush about Marco Rubio, which I was hoping to talk about a little bit later. Uh, but, but just in terms of Donald Trump talking about Chris Christie, he was criticizing him a little bit for being in New Hampshire so much. We can see folks boarding the plane here now on this live picture uh, from the tarmac in Omaha. Um, and we will have a picture, as I understand it, inside, but we'll not have the ability to speak to our reporter who's there on the plane during the event, so we'll get more after that. Um, but one of the things that came out with him attacking Chris Christie is he was going after him about spending so much time in New Hampshire and not being home in New Jersey. As we see him going after Christie in New Hampshire, is this a sign, McKay, that Donald Trump is starting to feel threatened? An ad by an Iowa attacking Christie who's gaining in the polls in New Hampshire. Yeah, well, every time Trump has singled out a candidate uh, and gone after them, it's usually a sign that either A, that candidate has insulted him or somehow wounded his ego, or B, that he represents some sort of genuine threat. Christie has gradually but consistently been rising in the polls, gaining traction in New Hampshire. Uh, and Trump, uh, I think, is becoming increasingly aware, or at least his campaign is, that he stands a very good chance of losing Iowa. I mean, we've seen Ted Cruz surge in Iowa, and before that, Ben Carson was giving him a hard time. Iowa has never been a perfect state for somebody like Trump to win. It's heavily religious, heavily evangelical. Those voters do not necessarily love Trump. And so he's seeing New Hampshire as a state uh, in that scenario that he has to win if he loses Iowa. And, and with Christie steadily rising in the polls there, uh, gaining traction there, winning the endorsement of the New Hampshire in, union leader, Trump feels like he, it, it probably feels like he needs to, to start knocking him down a few pegs. And every time Trump has gone after one of his opponents like this, it's tended to work. So, so the question is, how does Christie respond? It'll be interesting to see. So uh, we can see we've now got some lights on Donald Trump on board this plane, and I'm told we will have a little bit of sound. So let's, uh, let's listen in as we should be hearing, I 